The RCP still plays a major diagnostic role in regard to biliary strictures, but uh, nonetheless, uh, there is room for significant improvement. Today, I would like to talk about tissue acquisition during the RCP and how this can be enhanced. It is sufficient to say that reports show that two-thirds of uh, indeterminate biliary strictures are malignant, but uh, one-fourth of all surgical resection specimens for this indication were reported as benign disease. Until very recently, brushing had always been considered an easy, cheap and fast method to acquire a cytological specimen. But despite a specificity of nearly 100%, the sensitivity is still around 45. So, in effect, we are still talking about accuracy that we associate with flipping a coin. This situation exists because insufficient effort has been made to improve technique and technology. This low percentage clearly means that we have uh, to ask and answer some fundamental questions in order to get better results. Several studies uh, have shown that the use of multiple tissue sampling techniques uh, in combination can help to determine the indeterminate. Fluoroscopically guided uh, forceps biopsy sampling has been individual sensitivity of 35%. But when this technique is combined with brushing, the cancer detection rate improved to 63, which is a very good result for such a demanding procedure. A compelling reason to increase investment in ERCP tissue technology is that it leads to a significant reduction in unnecessary surgery. When we decide to approach uh, an indeterminate stricture to obtain tissue samples, we have to consider the following key considerations and points before undertaking the procedure. The first are the technical aspects, choice of device, the choice between biopsy or brushing, and the technical challenges during sample acquisition and, of course, to have adequate fluoroscopy imaging. Then we have to consider lesions and their surroundings. First of all, the characteristics and, of course, difficult locations, in particular to consider curves and angles in biliary tracts. Very recently, an Italian retrospective study reported that the diagnostic herd of ERCP-guided brushing of biliary strictures, when supported by rows, had a sensitivity far higher than those reported for brushing alone and at least comparable to those of more expensive and invasive techniques. The ERCP guided brushing uh, obtain probably better results when the rapid on-site evaluation is added. Adding the rows to ERCP guide brushing technique could be considered the first choice in the diagnosis of indeterminate biliary strictures, also avoiding multiple ERCP sessions and expensive adjunctive techniques. However, data shows that an on-site pathologist is only present around 30% of the time. The Infinity ERCP sampling device is purpose built for collecting substantial and quality samples from strictures in the biliary duct. It represents an important step forward. Better performance is achieved thanks to innovative characteristics which can be enhanced using various techniques. There are two different catheter sizes. The 7.5 French is more flexible and switchable for very tight strictures and for approaching very angled and curved tracts. The 9 French catheter is slightly larger and may make traversing a stricture somewhat more difficult. Let's look at advantages. Unique wire guiding to get your specimens, serrated jaws for grasping, 
and good visualization under fluoroscopy. For uh, a pathologist, tissue is the issue. Increased tissue health improves the pathologist's ability to make a diagnosis in case of potentially malignant biliary stricture. Articles in peer-reviewed journals are positive in their assessment of the Infinity ERCP and recommend its increased use, especially by experienced staff. It's important to stress that the device is only one of number of factors that determine successful tissue acquisition. Finally, I want to say that for optimal result, we need to identify the weak links in our chain and make them stronger. We know that biliary biopsy can give us a lot of a big advantage to increase the accuracy and the diagnosis of the lesions that we are evaluating during ERCP. Consecutive patients with biliary structure or irregularities of the bile duct wall, randomly allocated to either direct or wire grasping method. Wire grasping method had a significantly higher success rate for obtaining adequate specimen. The literature also showed nowadays that in a retrospective study of 365 patients, a slim biopsy forces reach a 75.6% of sensitivity for diagnosing malignancy in indeterminate biliary structures. A higher sensitivity was noted for distal bile duct lesions in around 83%. That's why nowadays we have histogai have a very nice flexibility in the tip and we can use guided by the guide wire and we can reach not just the distal part of the biliary tract, also the proximal part, having a good accuracy as we all already mentioned it during the studies that has been performed during the last years. Backload the guide wire into the wire guide attached to the biopsy cups and advance the forceps into the biopsy channel using short strokes to avoid kinking the sheath. Do not force the device through the endoscope as that could damage the device or endoscope. If resistance is felt during biliary duct cannulation, reduce the angulation of the endoscope or lower the elevator of the endoscope. When accessing the duct, aim the forceps towards the biliary duct, towards the 11 or 12 o'clock position, and shorten the scope length to stay close to the opening of the papilla. Once the lesion is identified under fluoroscopic imaging, maintain visualization throughout the use of the forceps. To sample the lesion, open the cups by moving the slider away from the thumb ring. Advance the forceps with the cups open to the desired tissue while maintaining fluoroscopic imaging. Close the cups by moving the slider toward the thumb ring and grasp the tissue. Remove the forceps from the endoscope using slow, continuous strokes to minimize the scatter of bodily fluids and remove the forceps from the guide wire. Transfer the specimen to a specimen jar and medium for preservation for pathology per institutional guidelines. Rinse the forceps in sterile water while actuating handle until any excess specimen sample is removed. 